Hey there! Welcome to our beginner's guide to V-Ray for 3DS Max. This guide will help you get started with the software and get you rendering in no time. Today we're going to take a tour of where to find the different features of V-Ray within 3DS Max. This video is mostly a walkthrough of the user interface. We won't be doing a lot of rendering in this video, but you can download our project files from the link in the video description and experiment with the scene in your own time. The first thing we'll look at is the V-Ray toolbar, which gives you quick access to some super handy V-Ray tools. For example, there's the render button that begins a production render. You'll notice there's a small arrow at the bottom right corner of the icon. This means there are more tools available. If you click and hold, another option will appear. This option lets you start the Interactive Production Render, or IPR for short. The IPR allows you to change the scene while it's rendering, which makes it super easy to work on and perfect your final image. Next on the toolbar is the Chaos Cloud button, which sends our scene to be rendered on the cloud. The Chaos Cloud is a cloud rendering service designed to save you time and deliver fast results. Next up is the V-Ray Frame Buffer, or VFB for short. Let's click on it and check it out. Keep in mind, if you haven't already set V-Ray as your current renderer, clicking on any button on the toolbar will prompt you to make that change. This is a quick way to set V-Ray as your current renderer. With the V-Ray Frame Buffer open, let's quickly go over its user interface. The VFB is where we'll see our render. We can start a new production or interactive render directly from here. There are also some useful tools, such as the Render Region, Resolution Percentage, and Track Mouse Button that can help you while working on your image. You can also save your render image from here. This drop-down menu lets you view the different render elements in your scene. Render elements provide extra information about your image, which can be useful when you're post-processing your image. If you double-click on the rectangle on the right side, you'll expand an additional menu. Here, you can do some compositing on your image to enhance its appearance. There's a wide range of color correction layers that give you lots of flexibility when post-processing your image. In this section, you can switch between different modes, like Light Mix, which lets you tweak the lights in your scene after the rendering has finished, and the Composite Mode, which allows you to do some basic compositing on your image. Also in the VFB, you can check out some render statistics about your scene. Look at the log if there are any issues with your scene, and even share your render for review using the collaboration feature. Similarly, if you double-click on the rectangle on the left side of the VFB, you'll expand the VFB history menu. You can use this feature to store your images. Saving your images here will store them in the VRIMG format which retains a lot more information than saving a single PNG image, for example. When you first open the VFB history, it'll be grayed out. To set it up, just go to the VFB's options, either through the menu or by pressing the S key, and then head over to the history options. Here you need to turn it on and choose a place on your computer where the images will be saved, or you can pick the project path option. This will make a new folder named VFB underscore history. In the same place, where your 3DS Max project is. Remember to save and close the options window. Now let's close the VFB and look at the rest of the toolbar. Here you'll find tools that help you control all the lights and cameras in your scene. Next, there are all the different light sources. Using these, you can light up your scene any way you want, from simple lighting with rectangle and sphere lights, to a dynamic sun and sky system and image-based lighting using the V-Ray Sun and the V-Ray Dome Light. Next, there are different dynamic geometry tools that generate geometry only at render time. With the V-Ray Displacement, V-Ray Proxy, and V-Ray Fur, you can create really complicated shapes without using up too much memory or power. You'll also find the V-Ray Decal here, a handy tool that lets you put any material on any surface, saving you lots of time. For those of you interested in visual effects, or if you want to spice up your architectural visualizations, there's the V-Ray Volume Grid. This next one is the Chaos Cosmos Browser. It's a constantly growing library full of 3D models, materials, HDRIs, and more. You can use these assets to quickly build your scenes. Let's right-click on the V-Ray toolbar and dock it to the left. 
This small toolbar is the Chaos Scatter Toolbar. Chaos Scatter is a super useful tool that lets you scatter millions of objects on any surface. It can help you create anything from a simple grass wall to a dense forest. Let's dock this one to the left, too. If you've got Chaos Vantage installed, you'll also see its toolbar. This comes with tools to make working between 3DS Max and Vantage easier. Chaos Vantage lets you check out your most complex 3D scenes in real time, making it super fast to work and make changes. Let's move this toolbar to the side as well. Another place you'll find V-Ray is in the render setup. Here, you can control V-Ray settings and behavior, but you'll rarely need to change anything here. V-Ray is smart and user-friendly, automatically handling the technical stuff so you can focus on creating your image. This is the V-Ray tab, where you can control the image quality and customize settings for your camera, environment, and V-Ray frame buffer. The settings you'll probably adjust most often here are the image sampler type and its specific settings. Next, we have the GI tab, which is where you control the global illumination and caustics. However, you'll hardly ever need to change anything here. Then comes the settings tab, which contains some extra global settings. These settings are used only in very special cases. For instance, here is where you can turn on the ASUS CG color space and the distributed rendering, which lets you speed up your rendering by sharing the work among multiple computers. Note that if you hover your mouse over any setting, a little help box will pop up. You can change the language of these help boxes from this drop-down menu. Next up, let's go to the Render Elements tab, hit the Add button, and you'll see a list of all the V-Ray render elements. As we said before, these render elements provide extra details about your image, which you can use for post-production, or to better understand what's going on in your image. Now let's switch over to the V-Ray GPU renderer. Normally, you wouldn't want to switch from V-Ray to V-Ray GPU, and vice versa, after you've already started working on your scene, because the final result might not look the same. It's better to decide which engine you want to use at the start and stick with it as you build your scene, but let's switch it over for now so we can take a closer look at the user interface. Now we can use the V-Ray GPU renderer to render with any compatible hardware. As you can see, the settings have changed to control the GPU renderer. If you go to the Performance tab, for instance, you'll see all the compatible hardware your system has for the V-Ray GPU renderer. You can pick which hardware to use by checking the rendering checkbox. Let's switch back to the V-Ray renderer and explore a few more places where you can access the V-Ray features. Press the M key to open the Material Editor. If you're using the Compact Material Editor, go to Modes and switch to the Slate Material Editor. If you right-click to create a new node and go to Materials, then V-Ray, you'll see a list of all the V-Ray materials. Uh, let's select the V-Ray material to make one. This material is used a lot and can mimic a wide range of surfaces, from plastic to metal to gloss and more with a few tweaks to the settings. On the right side, you'll see all the options it has that allow you to make just about any kind of material. There are also the V-Ray maps. If you right-click to make a new map and go to the V-Ray section, these maps can help you achieve different effects, from molding an external image file to be used as a texture, to generating procedural effects that can be used to control highly complex procedural shaders to applying all sorts of randomizations and variation to the colors and textures of your image, making it much more natural and rich. Now, let's close the Material Editor and head over to the 3DS Max command panel. Under most of the different categories here, you'll see a special V-Ray section. There's one for the Geometry category, under Lights and Cameras, and even some specific V-Ray helper objects. The most used tools from these can be found on the V-Ray toolbar, as we saw earlier, also, there are some V-Ray modifiers. Also, if you look at the 3DS Max menu bar, you'll see the V-Ray drop-down menu. Click on it, and you'll see that most of the tools can be accessed from here, too. There are a few extra ones as well. For example, here is where you can find the exporters for V-Ray Proxy, V-Ray Scene, and VR Mats, as well as the V-Ray Converter which you can use to quickly convert a scene set for another renderer into a V-Ray one. You can also change the license settings from here and find a few helpful links. Next, you can open the 3DS Max Environment and Effects tab. 
Here you can turn on some atmospheric effects like environment fog and aerial perspective. These effects are great for large outdoor scenes, adding depth and a natural atmosphere to your image. If you select an object in the viewport and right-click, you can access its V-Ray object properties. Here are some options that only affect the selected object. You'd only want to change these options in very special cases. Lastly, to quickly access most of the V-Ray tools, you can press the X key in the 3DS Max viewport to open the search dialog and type in what you're looking for. This wraps up our tour of the V-Ray for 3DS Max user interface. Thanks for sticking with me till the end! By now you should have learned how to get to the most important features of V-Ray for 3DS Max and have a general idea of when to use them. Be sure to check out the rest of our Getting Started videos for V-Ray for 3DS Max or look at our documentation for more tips and tricks. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. See you soon!